A historic moment took place in the Mojave Desert. The XB-1 Supersonic has broken the sound barrier for the first time, ushering in a new era of high-speed flight. This is not just a test flight, but a direct challenge to all U.S. competitors. Russia and China have yet to unveil their concepts, while real-world trials are already happening here. Imagine this. This aircraft can fly at speeds over 800 miles per hour, powered by three powerful General Electric J8515 engines. Its carbon fiber and titanium structure makes it both lightweight and incredibly strong. The aircraft's unique fuselage design addresses the issue of loud sonic booms, a problem that once doomed the Concorde. But the journey wasn't easy. Aerodynamic stability was a major challenge at first. However, after refinements, the engineering team optimized the control system, making the transition to Mach 1 as smooth as possible. This is more than just a breakthrough. The U.S. is reclaiming its leadership in supersonic aviation, while others are still only dreaming about it. If everything goes according to plan, the next step will be the development of the Overture passenger jet, which will reduce transatlantic flight time to just 3.5 hours. That means supersonic travel is making a comeback. But this time, it'll be quieter, more affordable, and accessible to everyday travelers. If it were like the Concorde, it would create this loud, uh, what we call a sonic boom, everywhere that it is flying over at supersonic speed. Think back to the last time you felt something similar to getting behind the wheel of a turbocharged car for the first time after driving an old, naturally aspirated one. The difference is massive, like the whole world suddenly got faster. That's exactly the kind of moment aviation experienced on January 28, 2025, when the XB-1 supersonic, Boom Supersonic's experimental jet, finally broke the sound barrier, reaching Mach 1.1. This wasn't just a demonstration flight, it was proof that supersonic passenger travel is making a comeback. Now imagine this. While American engineers are celebrating, there's no doubt that in Moscow and Beijing, officials are nervously smoking in the corner, because this event doesn't just mean the U.S. is reviving supersonic flight technology, it means they're making it accessible, fast, and economically viable. This isn't some old Concorde guzzling fuel like your V8 at full throttle, the XB-1 is a lightweight, cutting-edge machine built with advanced composite materials that allow it to fly fast while reducing drag. Imagine choosing between a standard Boeing 737 and the XB-1, which is 2.5 times faster. The choice is obvious. Test flights in the Mojave Desert have proven that the aircraft remains stable even at these speeds, and Boom Supersonic's engineering solutions have significantly reduced the sonic boom meaning cities won't experience the deafening noise that plagued older supersonic jets. That means the problems that doomed the Concorde and the Soviet Tu-144 simply don't exist here. Why is this so important in a geopolitical context? Here's a simple test. What does Russia do when it loses technological superiority? It gets nervous. That's exactly what happened after the launch of the F-22 Raptor, and now with the XB-1, history is repeating itself. Meanwhile, China's trying to develop its own something similar, but the problem is that building a supersonic commercial jet isn't just about slapping two wings together and strapping on a powerful engine. You need aerodynamics, advanced materials, and optimized fuel efficiency. And so far, they have none of that. The XB-1 isn't just a test model, it's a real prototype for the upcoming Overture, a commercial supersonic airliner planned for launch by 2029. The aircraft measures 69 feet in length with a 21-foot wingspan. Its entire structure is made from carbon fiber and titanium, and it's powered by three General Electric J8515 engines. The primary goal of the test flights was to evaluate flight stability at supersonic speeds, performance of new materials, Efficiency of the General Electric J8515 engines, which generate about 4,000 pounds of thrust each. Another key focus was sonic boom research. One of the biggest issues with the old Concorde was that its shockwave was so powerful it shattered windows and frightened people, leading to bans on most routes. <laughs> when a supersonic aircraft flies over a town, a suburb, or a city, it will smash loose windows. During the test flights, one of the main challenges was maintaining aerodynamic stability while transitioning to Mach 1.1. Many aircraft faced the sound barrier problem. 
the point where turbulence and air resistance create serious risks for both the pilot and the aircraft structure when breaking the speed of sound. However, Boom Supersonic utilized the next generation composite materials that not only reduced the aircraft's weight, but also made it stronger and more aerodynamically efficient. In the US, the closest supersonic aircraft in terms of speed are military jets like the F-22 Raptor and F-35 Lightning II. But those are designed for combat, not passenger travel. Previously, there was the SR-71 Blackbird, which could reach Mach 3.3 over 2200 miles per hour, but it was retired due to extremely high maintenance costs. But what about the competition? Russia has the TU-160 White Swan, which can reach 1,380 miles per hour, Mach 2, but it's a heavy, outdated strategic bomber, not a civilian aircraft. China's working on its own supersonic passenger jet project, but for now, it's just a concept with no real test flights. Meanwhile, the XB-1's competitive advantages are already becoming clear. The biggest factor? Efficiency and accessibility. Older supersonic jets burned massive amounts of fuel, the Concorde consumed over 6,750 gallons per hour. In contrast, the XB-1 is designed for greater fuel efficiency thanks to its next-generation engines. Another key advantage? Reduced sonic boom. If the Concorde sounded like a bomb exploding, the XB-1, thanks to its aerodynamic shape and advanced technology, creates a shockwave that dissipates gradually instead of all at once. This means cities won't oppose its use, making supersonic travel commercially viable again. And now the big question, why does this matter for everyday people? Because supersonic flights can change everything. Imagine taking off from New York to London and instead of the usual seven hour trip, you're already sitting in a pub ordering a pint of cold ale in just three and a half hours. Or flying from Los Angeles to Tokyo in just four hours instead of 11. And here's the final touch. This program has received billions in investments and the U.S. government's closely monitoring its development. What does that mean? It means they already see a strategic interest in it. With this kind of speed, the military can deploy forces faster than ever, intelligence agencies can respond more rapidly, businesses can operate more efficiently. XB-1 is just the beginning of a new era. While Russia and China are still figuring out how to respond, the U.S. is already testing the next stage of supersonic technology. If you want to stay ahead of what's coming next, keep a close eye on our channel. That's it for today. What do you think about supersonic travel? Drop your thoughts in the comments and share your opinion. And don't forget to subscribe for the latest updates on technology and military aviation. Thanks for watching and see you next time.